Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. And today is part two of my spirit guides answer your political questions. Thank you so much for sending them in. I think it's fascinating to see what the world and, and you know, we have viewers here from all over the place and also what United States viewers are interested in right now, right? So we're going to start this off, but before I do, I do want to say thank you to the two viewers who wrote down in their calendars that a week or two ago, no, I think it was about three weeks ago, that I said there was energy around August 14th for Trump to be indicted. Um, this is what I said in one of my videos. You guys wrote it in your calendar, you know, double check. Susan said there could be energy around Trump getting indicted on August 14th. And well, here we are. It's August 15th and Trump was indicted yesterday. So, but what I want to say is not that I was right. What I want to say is WTF to my spirit guides. <laughs> if you're a regular viewer, you know what I'm talking about. I, I did a video yesterday. I did part one yesterday on August 14th. And yet I couldn't I mean, I did tell you guys Rudy Giuliani wasn't likely going to be indicted, but I'm just saying that my spirit guides are often so far out from today. Like if you guys ask me a specific question, I can go in and answer that specific question. And that's why these videos work so well. But when I'm forecasting into the future, the guides will tell me things, you know, just apropos of nothing. Sometimes in these videos, they'll drop that information in. And it's so far in the future, right? And number one and number two, I remember telling you guys the last video I did, not yesterday, but the last video I did where I said, I cannot get the guides, the spirit guides excited about Trump. Like to, to them, it's a nothing taco. Remember I said that to them, it's done. He's done. Why are y'all asking about it? It's like when your kid keeps asking when Hanukkah or Christmas or whatever their birthday is going to come and you're like, for the love of God, it's going to be tomorrow. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Stop asking me. So that's how the guides are like to them. This energy is, is done. It's, it's complete. It's literally complete. Like the energetic spiritual clerk at the energetic spiritual office has stamped the papers in Trump's contract complete in his sole contract. They've shuffled the papers over to the next one. And the next person has said, okay, received and complete. And now the next one is put it in the file. And for them, this is all done. You know, in the future, I guess you would say this is done. However, I would like to take this time and remind them that I'm a human living in this timeline. It's not done for us. So we would like, and I think I speak on behalf of you, if you would like to join uh, this message to my spirit guides, to be more in the now, right? Let's not go two, three months out in advance. How about we just stay right here in the next week or two? How about that? So anyway, I just think it's interesting that I predicted this, that the spirit guides predicted this. I completely forgot about it because I'm channeling these messages. I do not remember them at all. I am going to have to do a better job of recording something because I can't find anything to, I mean, I, thankfully I do have volunteers who do timestamps. They literally listen to these things and they put the timestamps together and I pin their comment to the comments. So if you're looking for time span stamps, give us, give them, because this is a free thing, a volunteer thing they do. Please thank them for it. It's not, you know, it's work. This is work. They're not just enjoying it. They're actually recording what is happening. But give them 12 to 24 hours. And I, and when they do that, I pin the comments. Okay. But um, it, it is, at least I have that because without them, I wouldn't know anything unless you viewers told me, hey, Susan, you said this. <laughs> so thank you. And thanks to the spirit guides for working with us and helping us and guiding us. And I am grateful for that. I'm just saying that if I could put in a request, I would put in a request that, yes, the energy is done for you, uh, wherever the future that is great. But, you know, us little humans here on the planet Earth, we're still really in the middle of it. And we would really like some more uh, very time-specific guidance. Thank you.
All right, let's get moving. All right, so we're going to start off with, oh, right, Mary Louise. Mary Louise wants to know about Marjorie Taylor Greene. This is such a good question, right? Because um, I have not really been watching the news. As a matter of fact, I don't even have cable. I'm traveling right now, and I, I kind of check on some things or the guides, the spirit guides will you know, bring something to my attention, but I'm not really... I haven't really been checking the news, but it does seem that she's quiet because typically MTG gets in front of a camera and in front of a microphone and she's pretty vocal. Therefore, she gets news coverage, whatever little news I may be watching, what whatever the, the predominant thing is, it usually comes across my view. Um, so it's interesting. So you're asking Mary Louise, did she get an indictment notice or is someone telling her to keep her mouth shut right now? I mean, honestly, Mary Louise, do you think someone could tell her to keep her mouth shut? Does somebody have that kind of control over her? Okay. All right. They're saying she is not her own counsel. She's not her own. She doesn't have her own. She doesn't keep her own counsel. I don't understand that. She's not her own boss. Okay. They changed it to she's not her own boss. Okay. So that's interesting. That's That seems interesting. Um, you might want to ask who's boss, who's her boss, right? I mean, it's what I'm saying. Like, do I have to pull teeth here? Okay. So who is her boss? Who's controlling her? Who, who's telling her to be quiet? Um, so sometimes I will say that, that they don't show me things. It's for my own protection. It's for, it's for my own protection. Let's just put, I was going to say it's for all of our protection, but let's just face it. I'm the one on the end of the stick here <laughs> over the fire. I'm the hot dog over the fire. Uh, so it's for my own, my own um, safety uh, that I don't know that. Okay. That's, that's cool. Um Oh my God. It's like when I did something unsafe recently and I was telling a friend that my brother came to tell me not to go down this trail. And my friend goes, well, what happened? I said, I went down the trail. <laughs> it just reminds me because I'm like, well, you know, I could get this information a different way. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Let's do this differently. Okay. Let me ask a different question. Um, right. Okay. So they're saying, Susan, you know how your parents use your name and you're like, uh oh, Susan, uh, the heat is being turned up on these people and they're, um, I don't know what that word is, they're uh, reckless, they're sort of like in a corner, they're backed into a corner, uh, their energy is frenzied, uh, they're not, uh, we don't know what they will do, nobody knows what they will do, uh, they don't know what they will do, they're reactionary, uh, so don't push your luck. <laughs> Well, I didn't see that coming. I didn't see that part coming. All right. I'm not going to push my luck. I mean, that's a like my middle name is Susan. Push her luck, you know, Lynn. But that's okay. I, I'll, you know, I'll back off. Um, is there anything else that I can know about M MTG that, that would be helpful or not? See, they don't think any of this is helpful. They're like, why do y'all want to know this stuff? Because we need to calm down because we need information to let us know that justice is coming so we can all calm down and not have ulcers and not spend all our money in therapy. That's why. Does that help? Can you now give us some answers? She'll get, she'll get her rewards. Uh, she'll get, she'll, she'll get the rewards of her uh, efforts. She's going to be found out, exposed, no hiding. Um, I see, I am seeing, so clairvoyant, you see things, right? As well as like claircognizant, you have knowings. Uh, I'm seeing her being backed into a corner and I'm seeing this corner is almost like, um, it, it's a place that would have been dark, like an alley, Except for interestingly enough, it's it's not the well, I mean, I guess an alley could look like this, but the walls are almost like smooth, like building walls that are very smooth. There's nothing there like you would see in an alley, like a trash can or detritus or dirt or nothing. There's nothing there. There's two walls, they're very plain. Uh, meaning there's no surface, there's no way that she could climb up them, there's nothing she can get a hold of. She's backing into the corner. 
I mean, I can literally see her. She's kind of at an angle. Her one leg is out and she's pushed back, right? She's like, "Uh uh-oh, here's the wall. I can't go any further. But she's not again, her back isn't against the wall yet. She's away from the wall, but her arms are back here, pushing back against the wall. And what's interesting is her body is canted to the to the right, could be the left, because when I'm looking at somebody, everything is reversed like a mirror. And her leg is out, like not like she's kicking, but one leg is bent in and one leg is bent out onto the ground. Oh, I see. Because she, because what she's doing is she, if you're up against the wall, you have nothing. You, you, what are you going to do, right? Like you're pinned against the wall. So by putting her hands against the wall and turning her body to the side, do you see what I'm saying? She's trying to escape. She's not meeting this head on. It's not pinned her to the wall yet. She's to the side. Her hands are against the wall, but that means that she can push off. Her feet are not straight up and down. They're at an angle and kind of cocked as if ready to spring. So she's going to try to spring, go do an end around, what we would call in kids, right? Do an end around. She's going to try to go around this problem. She has very uh, lucrative... Um, it's not really the right word. She has very uh, moneyed interest helping her. Um, powerful, powerful moneyed interest, whom apparently I can't name, helping her. But again, back to a visual, I see them putting their hand out to, to help her. Like, here's our hand, grab our hand. But they're not that's all they're doing. Like if she can get to their hand, they can pull her to safety or relative safety, not complete safety, but relative safety. But let me tell you, they're not budging an inch. They're not walking toward her. They're not even leaning toward her. That means something. All of this means something. They're simply putting their hand out to her. If you can make it to us, past this, you know, whatever this is, the DOJ, you know, you name it, um, Jack Smith, even Fonnie Willis, if you can make it around there and get to our hand, we will help you. Now, the question is, right, the question I have, question you probably have as well, is she going to do it? Can she do it? Can she get around them? I Right now, an energy changes. All of these people have free will, right? What if she came to her senses or found some senses somewhere in her body, like not came to them, but literally like looking for change in a couch, you know, she like found some sense, some common sense and said, you know what? I don't really want to go down for this, you know, guy. I don't really want to take the whole burden. I, I, I'm going to try to plea deal. So she could try to plea deal. But the energy suggests that that's not in her thinking right now. She's not, this is not something she's considering. Um, in her energy, she considers this thing, which is like the DOJ or whatever. It's like a monster. It's trying to get her. It's trying to consume her. It's trying to hurt her. And she needs to, she really thinks that she can shimmy, like literally turn to the side and shimmy around. But there's a wall there, you guys. This is, she's in a corner. So this side is also a wall. It's not like she can bolt for the hills. She's hemmed in by a wall on this side. So she's got to get between this and the wall, get around that to get to this hand. I don't see it happening. Personally, I I don't. And, and this is energy. This is interesting too. It's almost like the energy that's here that, that would be justice. Let's just call it the justice energy. The justice energy is sort of, I mean, I'm, this is what I'm seeing and I, I don't know why, but it's almost like they're toying with her the way a cat toys with a mouse. You know what I mean? The cat just stares at the mouse because the game doesn't begin until the mouse moves, right? Once the mouse moves, now we got a game. So the minute she tries to lunge and shimmy, 
they're just going to come out and 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 this is what's really interesting they're not going to grab her they're not going to grab her they're going to put their big cat paw right there so she can't go past it so she doesn't they don't nab her and say okay we've got you instead they block her from going forward so that's, I mean, you know, you, this is the thing about psychic abilities, right? It, they come in pictures, they come in thoughts, they come in feelings. I mean, and it, I've told you this many times, it's almost like a blizzard of information that kind of goes through the hopper of Susan's consciousness. And then I try to put it into some kind of meaning for you, but you can also, that's the raw data. That is the raw data. You can also put it in your own hopper and come up with your own idea of what does this mean, right? You could take the ingredients and make a different dish. So for me, what this means is, so I don't know why this is important, but there's, so when I was thinking, I was just talking to them and I said, well, is she detained? She's not detained. There's no rope attached to her. So that's important too. She has freedom to move around. However, when she tries to move, they block her. Why it's important that she doesn't have a rope attached to her, but yet she can't go forward is, is super important. It's like, you're not detained, but you're under surveillance or you're under suspicion or, and I don't understand it. But they don't want her right now. So that's another thing in the energy that I picked up a lot too about this whole situation, right? So in the beginning, and I keep saying in the beginning, but I guess in the beginning of my awareness of Fonnie Willis, in the beginning of my awareness of the energy around Fonnie Willis and the energy of Rico. And I've, I've done a video a long time ago where I talked about Rico. Rico was going to be it, right? And I've told you guys that Atlanta was going to be ground zero. Now, what I also understood was, as recently as probably a month ago, that Fonnie Willis was going to be the one that was going to tackle, bring down, indict some of these Congress people. You know, Lindsey Graham and some of these Congress people. And then when I did my video yesterday, I'm like, I don't think Lindsey Graham is going to go down. And if he goes, does go down, he's not going to, nothing's happening to him. So the energy changed. Again, she's working with Jack Smith. So I feel like maybe all of these people, and I, and I, and I said all of these people before I, I mean, this is just came right out of my mouth. All of these people, I'm seeing Matt Gates. This is for entertainment purposes only and allegedly. I'm seeing people like Matt Gates, people like Jim Jordan and M T M Marjorie Taylor Greene and Bobert. There's a there's a big group of them, right? The Freedom Caucus. I'm seeing those people on notice. You're on notice. Nobody is, I don't understand that. It's like they're not detained yet. They're in a room together. I don't understand that. It's the same thing with Marjorie Taylor Greene. She's in this room. When she tries to leave, they block her, but they tell her you're not detained. So I don't really understand how that even works. How did, what are you trying to say, Spirit? Um, they're, are they being detained? Not officially. Okay. They're not officially detained, but we're not going to let them get away. Okay. Okay, that makes all the sense in the world. They're not detained officially, but we're not going to let them get away. So we don't have a, a, an attachment, a rope, a, a you know, a cord. We don't have some kind of thing where we're keeping them in some length, in some attachment to the law. However, we're not going to let you get away. That's it. That's 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 the the energy. Now I get it. I get it now. Okay. They're playing with her in the sense that no, you're free to go. You're free to go. Go ahead. Bye. Have a nice day. But she's not really free to go because they're watching everything and 
anything she says and does is is icing on the cake as the cherry on top so that's what's going on so that was a big long thing but i really wanted to go into that because that was bizarre uh that they showed it to me like that and i, I think they did it like that because this is such a um such a volatile situation energetically and obviously they're a little bit concerned about me saying certain things so i think they showed it to me in this metaphor in in this more oblique way so that i didn't step in the poo poo the spiritual poo poo okay let's move on thank you for your question mary louise that was quite a question okay now listen here we've got some more interesting things wait till you hear this Barb Williams, God bless you, Barb, says, good evening, Susan. This was sent yesterday. I was wondering if Ted Cruz will lose his American citizenship and be sent back to Canada. Barb, we don't know each other well enough for you to be threatening me with a good time. Come on now. That's like saying, Susan, would you like a donut? And then slap on my hand when I try to get it. Okay. I don't see him going back to Canada. Canada, what are you? Canada's got more sense than we do. I keep trying to tell y'all that. They don't want him. Number one. Number two, the energy suggests, and I'm seeing Fonnie Willis, and I told you guys in part one that the energy has changed, and it looks like there's a part one and a part two for Fonnie. Like a, like a part one was... What did they say yesterday? She lined up her ducks and she shot them down. It was very much, you know, like the old time, the metal ducks, you know, in the in the fair. It was very performative. It was very much like, the, again, like the guides saying to me, August 14th, and then also saying, it's a done deal, Susan. It's already, look, it, this, like they're showing me the files already got dust on them in the spirit world. Like this is already so done. I mean, first of all, they need to dust. But second of all, like this is their idea of telling me this is over. This is done. And it's very similar with what Fani did with her people that she indicted yesterday. It's, it's she did the kind of the bare minimum. She did what she needed to do. Could she have gone further afield? Yes. Could she have enlarged the scope? Yeah. She did not. She did not. It was like instead of like, a, you know, doing this big spray paint spray, we're going to put the nozzle on it and we're going to be very specific. We're just going to do this. Right. Very specific, very targeted. So now what is so Ted Cruz, what for whatever reason, he's coming to me in a in in connection to Fonnie Willis now it could be that the data the evidence the witness testimony whatever it is the Fonnie Willis was able to and they said this yesterday was was able to amass she's giving it to Jack Smith and we also told you that this is possible this happened in the E. Jean Carroll case the E. Jean Carroll judge said, yes, the attorneys of E. Jean Carroll can share the evidence they got with Jack Smith. Okay, so I do think that this evidence is going to be shared with Jack Smith. And I think that, again, what they're showing me is that, again, that this is important that they do it this way. They, uh, they are doing it very in a very prescribed way. If you're a longtime viewer, the, the guides were saying uh, months and months and months ago, the cure cannot kill the patient. They said it over and over again. The cure cannot kill the patient. Well, here we are with the cure. We're indicting Donald J. Trump. This is the cure to what ails us. However, to expand this whole investigation to these Congress people and senators, would kill the patient. It would be too much. So they've got a plan. They're going to prescribe, they're going to target these people and they're going to wrap them up and put them away. Or at least 
wrap up the investigation and put the investigation away. They're going to do their part. This is my part. I've done it. I'm, I've, I've done a great job. I'm happy that the energy suggests I'm very happy with what I've done here. And now I'm going to pass it on. Maybe that's to a judge. Maybe that's to Jack Smith. Okay, Crystal Dragon Woman would like to know about the Virginia Governor Youngkin. And her question is, well, she's calling him a wolf's in sheep's clothing. I think we would all maybe agree with that. He presents as a moderate GOP, but he's been governing as an arch conservative going after abortion, voting rights, education, et cetera. Okay, although he is not declared is he being held as a possible moderate to turn to when DT goes down? Crystal Dragon Woman, we've talked about this before. When I go into Youngkin's energy, I mean, he wants to be president. I mean, there's no doubt about that. His he He's got a fixation about being president. I, I feel like he's, somebody gave him, and this was supposed to be sort of a joke, wink, wink, but he took it too seriously, wink, wink. I think somebody photoshopped him into uh, behind the podium of the United States with the seal uh, of the United States president. And he has this picture. I mean, like, you know, <laughs> he's got a vision board, y'all. He's got his own manifestation vision board. And there it is. He looks at it every day. I'm going to be president. But the thing is, Regardless of whatever you want to say about his politics, this is no dummy. He's a sly fox, the guides want to say. And um, what we read before was that he doesn't want a broken country. He doesn't want to govern. He doesn't want to be president when things are hard, right? What do Republicans do, right? They they Everything breaks down. Look at the graphs. It's, it's pretty obvious. If you look at history, you can see this plainly displayed before your eyes, Democrats leave Republicans great economies with a lot of good things going on. And uh, in 24, our country, whereas it is going to be doing better for sure, it's still going to be suffering from some infighting and some just, it's just not going to be, he doesn't want it. He doesn't want it. He wants it when it's nice and pretty, when the Democrats shine it all up. And, and it's looking good, that's when he's going to run. Now, can the Republicans really coerce him or, you know, really encourage him would be another word to use. Can they encourage him? They can. They can sweeten the pot. They, But again, uh, I right now, no. Right now, my answer is no. I don't see him. He It would be against his own better judgment. He's saying, uh, I'll do it in 28. I'll take over in 28. Biden will have had plenty of time to sort things out. The, the country will be back uh, firing on all engines and uh, I'll take it over then. Thank you very much. So I don't see that. I just don't see young Ken doing that. I, he could, she could be encouraged. There is this word coerced or encouraged. He certainly could be, um, I mean, I mean, there's always this thing they just showed me. There's always this thing with the Republican Party. And the, the problem is they value power over anything, right? And, and so whereas with a Democrat, if you present to a Democrat, hey, we caught you doing X, Y, Z, or hey, this doesn't look so good, they step down. You know, they step down. Republicans don't do that. They don't step down. They they just govern like it doesn't matter. They're really moving the goalposts, the, ex, the ethical goalpost, aren't they? So what I saw was they could, and, and there's a reason I use the word coerce. If you notice, I tried to change it to encourage, but twice they used the words coerce. Look it up. They could make him run. They could have something, some reason. They could have some thing that they say, you know, really, you should consider this because, you know, you just might want to reconsider. Now, if that's the case, this person, whoever this is, whatever politician is made to run because they have dirt on them, is now a puppet. We talked about this in my, you know, in the number one questions, part one, right? So this is kind of a big problem we have right now in our 
in our politics, other countries, you know, really struggle with this, but this is really becoming a problem here in the United States. So uh, if left to his own devices, the answer is no. If someone makes him, the answer is yes. And if he says yes, then I would be, I would be inclined to believe that it wasn't his decision. Let's just leave it at that. For entertainment purposes only, thank you for your question. And Barb Mecca says, did Boris Epstein, former Trump advisor, arrange secret financial agreements and contracts between Trump and Russia? Will Boris divulge this information and be indicted? I'm I'm getting a little bit of a of a security warning uh, today with a lot of things that are going on. Apparently, this latest indictment with Trump has triggered uh, some people to do some things that that uh, it's like a level five. You know what I mean? Like a new level. Like now these things are available to them. So I'm going to be a little careful in answering this question because this is a loaded question. Your question is: Did Boris Epstein? The former Trump advisor arranged secret financial agreements and contracts between Trump and Russia. Did Bor- I think I can safely, and I mean safely as in my own safety, say yes. Um, uh, and will Boris divulge this information and be indicted? Will he divulge the information? Well, he doesn't have to divulge it because the, the DOJ and some other acronym that I don't know what that is, another uh, governmental agency like uh, I don't know what that is. I don't know what it is. But anyway, another, they, they know. The, the bottom line is they know. They know this. They have the information of it. They're currently trying to decide what to do about it because um, these things are very delicate. It's almost like they're trying to uh, walk. I think we talked about this yesterday. I don't know, but I think we did. To walking through landmines. Like it's it's a pretty explosive kind of thing that involves other countries. And, and this gets into bigger issues than just justice in the United States. It starts to become international. And that's why they're telling me now I get it. What is that? I'm probably not going to get, is it, is it FISA? There's a court, there's a special court that deals with international crimes with United States citizens it's either starts with a C or it's FISA. I don't know. It's there's a there's a special a special either condition or charge or something. And the legal eagles, they're they're telling me this. The legal eagles that watch the, these things are not public. But so what happens is they post uh, the docket. We don't really know. We just know that it's in this court. And everybody's like, wait a minute, what is that, right? What, this is this is international. So now you know, right? Now you can understand that we do have a pathway to deal with this, but it's not easy. It's not like we're dealing with Italy. It's not like we're dealing with Spain or, you know, Europe or Canada. We're, we're, we're dealing with a country that uh, probably isn't our friend, right? So uh, yes, the answer is yes. And the answer is I'm not sure how he's going to be indicted. Um, I right now I'm getting that he will get away. That could change. If you have complaints, please call 1-800-SPIRIT-GUIDES. Press one for complaints because all I'm doing is delivering the message here. Right now, that is my message, but it could change depending on the energy. Um, You know, Boris could get real scared about something and go to the DOJ and say, I need witness protection and I'm ready to be your man, right? He can change the outcome of this energy. I'm just saying right now, it looks like he gets away with it. What, what that, that also can mean different things. It, It can mean that he doesn't do prison time, but it could mean that we expose the situation and therefore, we cut that, we close that channel, right? We maybe expel an ambassador or something. So it's it's not like we don't get anything out of it. We're going to get something out of this, a lot out of this. So even if Boris walks, we got enough that we feel very good about what we got out of that situation. Okay, because I know that's irritating, and I, I don't blame you. And um, Citizen Q <laughs> says Jared and Ivanka WTF. I mean, 
I asked the same question about three times a day. <laughs> you know, I don't know, WTF, about what? About the two billion, about the copyright or the trademark, uh, about uh, Ivanka's mom, about Ivanka's dad. I mean, what's the WTF about? What 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 is your question? How many? There's so many WTFs regarding them. I would have a hard time narrowing it down to one question. So I would just say I agree with you, Citizen Q. WTF? All right, let's move on. Um, we're gonna see here. Oh, gosh. Okay. Denise Hansard says, as Trump is convicted, which I like the way you think, Denise, you're already talking in past tense about the future, about Trump's indictment. So that that's awesome. We're already like friends. Fantastic. As Trump is convicted and has the potential of going to jail, would Biden consider pardoning him? No, he would not consider pardoning him. Uh, Biden, uh, they're telling me when I, you can only imagine Biden more than anybody on the planet understands what Trump has done to our society, our civility, our democracy, our republic, our international standing. I mean, Biden under Biden understood the job. He understood what he needed to do. He under he got the memo. And he's not going to pardon this guy. Uh Biden will I mean that's a very I don't even know what guy told me that, but I but I I saw a picture of Biden walking past the Gitmo where we're going to keep Trump like a you know, the heavy duty security place that we're going to put him where he has no connection to the internet, to the public. The public has no connection to him. I saw that. And then the next thing I saw, I'm just telling you what I saw. Biden wouldn't even pee on his grave or pee on him if he was on fire. That's what I got. So you you can probably deduce from that how Biden feels about him and if Biden would be uh, feeling compassionate enough to um, pardon him. The answer is no. Okay, let's move on. Um, all righty. So Laura Jones wants to know what is going on with Florida. I mean, I have a lot of questions about Florida in these que- in these in these questions that you guys submit. Um, I've told you guys. Florida is dark. I've told you. And I love Florida. I love the state. I I love the people. But, you know, it's, it's, it's really, the energy is dark. It's even darker than Texas. And that's like something I find hard to believe, right? Or even darker than some of these other states. It's like they're all vying to be the worst state, you know, in the United States. But Florida is really dark right now. Now, what I would say to you is I read on Florida and I told you guys, that it, it's going through its dark night of the soul. It's going to come out the other side and it's going to be, it, it's, it's going to be like the, uh, the showcase. It's going to show us how it's done environmentally with permits, with uh, ecosystems, with um, building around ecosystems. It's going to show us how it's done. It's going to become a showcase. I know that might be hard to believe, but that's what's going to happen. Now, before that happens, you know, we have to hit rock bottom. You know, when you're addicted to greed and and all of that stuff and and the whole United States is, but you know, when let's just talk about Florida, you have to find the bottom. You have to get to the place where there's no return. Now, that might be You know, right now we see insurance agencies fleeing Florida. You know, we see um just so many things happening. Uh, the inflation in Florida is super high. People can't afford things. Uh, immigrant workers uh, are not wanting to work there. Uh, people aren't think. People are thinking about not going to college there. I mean, it's really kind of in a free fall right now, if you will. And um, and and that's that's good to be honest with you because the faster you hit the bottom the faster you we can you know when when you hit bottom these republicans these greedy corporations and these outside interests don't want you you're not useful it's like you're not generating profit for me people don't want to be here well i'm leaving 
So once the Republicans leave, what happens? You guys know every time the government comes in and and does government backed insurance, government backed this, government backed that, government pours money into it, the government fixes it. This is always a democratic government, but also, and if if you're a Republican and you want to put something in the comments that proves me otherwise, that's really factual, I'm happy to talk to you. But this is really the deal. So once you guys get to the bottom, I see DeSantis going. Um, and then I see again what's left are the people the people are like that's it we've had it we've had it with everybody coming to our state and using us we've had it with not being represented we've had it with being uh taken advantage of we've had it so once the people have had it then they get in and fix it and I really see Florida changing. I really see Florida becoming, um, again, this showcase of how to build around sensitive ecosystems, how to value sensitive ecosystems, how to have sensitive ecotourism. It, it really is amazing. Now, this is going to take a little while. It's probably going to take, you know, aggregate of 10 years. However, that's a better scenario than Florida being cut off from the mainland and drifting off into, you know, the Bermuda Triangle, right? I mean, this is a better option. So yes, change takes time. It's going to take some time, but I do see really bright future for Florida. Now, I would also say that if you have a home in Florida and you're like, what do I do? I don't know. Um, you need to really play. It's each. This is going to be one of those situations where it's for you specifically. The you have to make this decision for you specifically. I would not necessarily sell at a loss and walk away. I would try my best to make the best of the situation and win. If you want to move, when is a good time for you to move? When your house, the, the, the sales are good for you, that it makes sense for you to sell, sell. If you want to stay, you'll need to understand that there will be changes. You may have to put your house on stilts. That means walking stairs. You may have to uh, spend some more money on your house. I mean, so, you know, there's... There are things to consider here. I don't see all that happening right now. I don't see all that happening in two years, three years, or four years, but it's definitely coming. Four, five, six, yes, this is coming. So you've got kind of at least um, an idea. Um, and you asked, will Rick Scott lose his seat? Right now, unfortunately, I have the word no, um, but there's a lot of things in play. Uh, he his energy suggests that he's like um, and this is perfect for Florida. You know, if you're in Florida, you probably have seen cr crab traps, right? Where they have the float on the top of the water, and then there's a rope that goes down to a trap. But in this case, I feel like he's the float, and he has a rope that goes down to like an anchor. He's grounded. He he's with able to withstand the storm. So when you have those floats, a lot of times, right, they can withstand the wave action and the currents, right, because they're anchored down below. That's what his energy is like right now. But I don't think I see him there for long, but right now he's anchored. He's pretty grounded. Uh, but, you know, the, the energy hasn't started to change in Florida yet. So there's no reason for him to change, right? Right now he's protected. He, you got DeSantis. So once DeSantis goes, that's going to sort of erode some of his protection. And then um, he eventually goes out. He, he definitely is going to go out just not maybe as soon as we would all like. Um, and, and let's, you know, send energy for this to change. Let's send energy for Florida to be lifted up, to be cradled, to be loved, to be soothed, to be healed. Let's create a vibration in our country that is so high that these people, and I mean, not, not send love to him, to the country, to the state to the land so that these people, their, their vibration doesn't match. 
So they're out of register with the vibration of the state. That'll be easier. It'll be easier to get rid of them. The more we raise our vibration up, send love and light to your state, to your town, to your community, to your street, to your house, to the United States of America, to the world, right? Just It just takes a second. And it really does, it does affect. Uh, energy is alive. It, it doesn't die. It doesn't go away. It's whatever you put out there to the universe is forever. So let's put good out there. Let's lift up everyone. Let's, let's lift up anybody that needs lifting up, right? Okay. Thank you so much, dear. Um, Christina Jackson says, will Kamala Harris be the first female president? Not by direct election, but rather via default. So um, Christina, thanks for your question. I have read on this a lot because when I first saw I wasn't familiar with Kamala Harris because she was California. And when I first saw her was when Biden introduced her as his VP. And this was obviously before Biden even won the presidency. So when I saw her on, on the screen, my guides told me she would be president. And they told me that she would be the law and order president of the United States. They also told me that she wouldn't be president through an election. It's just as you're saying that she would be taking over for Biden. Biden would be stepping down. I don't see Biden having some major problem or disappearing or you know crossing over. I, I just see him having sort of a health issue that he feels an abundance of caution. He should step down. And that's, that's the respect. That's the respect he gives the office. And I respect that, right? So now I would say that there was a time when I was 100% sure this was going to happen. And I'm watching the timeline, right? When I get these messages, I simply note them. I, I notate them. I let you guys know what I get. And then I watch to see if actual events in the 3D world and the timeline are mirroring this, are when are we coming into this timeline or did our free will choices change the timeline to shift? I've talked about this, right? I've seen things happening and I've seen it shift. I've seen Biden shift our timeline tremendously. I saw much, much more interaction by these groups, these uh, people that, um, you know, men that form groups and play play at uh, being an army. Okay, I have to be careful about what I say here. But I saw more interaction with them. I saw them being very involved in certain cities, almost being, um, well, like the word they suggest, you know, going around patrolling and being very involved. Now, the fact that Biden and through extension, the DOJ and Garland have arrested a lot of these people. They've just basically taken them out of commission and cut off the head, the 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 actual you know leaders of these groups. And then over a thousand people have been indicted that were in JAN six, right? So this really threw ice on that energy. It put the fire out. Um, it didn't completely put it out, but it put it out enough that it changed the timeline. So you can understand that when when Biden or people take big actions, it has a big effect on our timeline. Now, I still feel like she's going to be president. There are things in the timeline right now that that suggest to me that we are swinging into this timeline, that we are going to indeed uh, be in this timeline. But I would say that right now I'm about 90, I'm not 100%, but I'm about 90% sure that she is going to be president um, and she's going to be the law and order president. Now, you can infer from that that if Kamala Harris is the president and they're calling her the law and order president, you can infer that we need law and order. So you can infer that there's some kind of dust ups happening, right? That there's some strife happening, that she is presiding over that time period. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. Thank you for your question. Cynthia Price says, will Sarah Huckabee Sanders be the nominee for president in the future, not just in 24? Nominee. Nominee means the, no, she's not going to be. No, no. 
you know, again, I, I think I, I, they're telling me I said this about somebody else, but I don't know. Um, she's a, a tool. She's a useful tool for the Republicans. They, you guys, you can't believe anything they tell you. They, there's always uh, seven plans that are different behind whatever they say in public. Uh, so no, she's useful to them. She's doing their work. Uh, she's, uh, they're, they're happy that she's doing the work she's doing. Keeping the faith is what they're saying. Like keeping that hard, right kind of faith, but she's, I don't see her ever being nominated. She might run for president. That's different. She might be in the pack of 12 people or 20 people. I never, I do not see her being nominated. Um, never say never, but right now I do not see it. Okay. M. Miss Karen Liu uh, says, will we learn about who in the military secret service Congress was involved in one six and will they go to trial? Will we learn about who in the military secret service Congress? Yeah. Okay. Yes. I see your, I, I got hung up on all the military and then the secret service and then the Congress. I had to ask the guides about all these things. Yes. The answer is uh, we will learn so much more we'll learn so much that we will be shocked at how bold and dis these words they use sometimes um maybe i'm going to say disgraced they're trying to say distrustful distrustful is not a word but that's like the guides giving me information and me trying to match a word to it it sometimes it just doesn't work uh disgraced how disgraceful. <laughs> nah, there you go. Disgraceful. Um, these people were like just a uh, shocked. I, I really honestly feel like next year, again, we're going through this astrological thing where we're kind of like, you know, in this fog where we're just not really aware. We're just not snapping to what's really happening in reality. We're going to come out of that next year. We're going to be blinders off and we're going to be literally shocked at at the state of some of these people, uh, some of these institutions, even uh, the state of our military, um, the readiness, the trustworthiness, uh, the state of the Secret Service, the Congress. I mean, it's really, we're really going to be shocked. And that's why I'm happy to have leaders like we have Biden and Kamala, because they're, they're very steady. You know, so if if the if we're reeling, we get information and we're reeling, just reeling about my God, what happened? We we can't believe this happened. We really need steady hands on the wheel. And that's why I'm really happy to have them. I think that's why Biden is the chosen person. I or not chosen person, but I think this is his, I think this was planned in a way. I think this is his sole contract is to be president. I think this is why he didn't win all those other, you know, times that he ran and why he stayed in politics and he didn't retire. Uh, I think somewhere he knew I'm supposed to be president. So he just kept running. Right. And it finally worked because this is when it's supposed to work. Okay. But yes, we will find out and they will go to trial. Um, I got the word espionage. Uh, so some of these people might be charged with espionage. Um, they will be held in, again, a similar, some of these people will be held in maximum security facilities. I did not say prison. I said facilities. So again, along the lines of what I believe Trump is going to be held in, I don't believe these people are going to be held in a prison. I think they're going to be held in a facility, more like a Gitmo, a standalone facility. And some of these people will be, and they will be uh, also, I just heard the word treason. Um, so yes, definitely so. Right. So the next question is from Be Happy and Be Happy says, I've been reading how evangelical pastors are disturbed by their congregations who are not supporting Jesus. Okay. Do we just need to repeat that? I mean, did I just say like uh, down is up and up is down? Honestly, evangelical evangelical pastors are upset because their own congregations are not supporting Jesus because they say that Jesus is weak and liberal. What do you do, right? You, you fed these people the poison, they drank the poison, and now they're 
running around spouting the poison. And now you're like, wait a minute, we didn't expect you would, we didn't think you would take it this far. We didn't think you would believe us. I mean, wait a minute, you really believe this stuff? Come on, this is all for show. Don't you know this is all for show? Meanwhile, you know, the congregants, their eyes are just going, and they're thinking Jesus is now woke and and a, a weak, pathetic, compassionate person. If that doesn't, if that does not describe the you know, the place that our humanity is at. I don't know what does. To me, that describes, it It encapsulates it perfectly. So um, your question is, just wondering what your guides have to say about this. Well, um, so, so you're saying also these pastors have created monsters and are now losing control of them. The guides would say the Republicans have created monsters. This is a really a visual that they talk about a lot, right? Like when they created Frankenstein and then Frankenstein got off the table and went rampaging through the town, you know, oops, you know, too late. Frankenstein is loose and Frankenstein is going to turn on you. These Republicans are turning on their pastors. They're turning on their churches. They're going to turn on, on their, on the Republican party. They're going to turn on Trump. They're going to turn on all of them. Now, when I think that happens is what I feel like it's going to happen is, is that they're going to just disassociate, right? Because they're not going to join the Democrats because we're woke. We're, we're like Jesus loving freaks, according to them. So, but they don't trust the, the Republicans, but they, because the Republicans keep lying to them saying that we're going to arrest Biden. And these people keep going, but when are you going to arrest him? How come you're not arresting him? You know, if you go and you follow some of these Republicans like MTG and Bovert, they get a lot of really harsh Republican criticism for not arresting Democrats because these people have made the Republicans believe that they're really going to. And they made them believe that if you just send me $10, I'll be able to do it, right? So what I see is these Republicans saying, I don't believe any of this, I'm out. I'm disgusted, right? Now, a problem with that is that if they say, I'm disgusted, I don't believe any of it, I'm I'm just gonna go to work, I'm gonna go get on my four-wheeler, I'm gonna go fishing, I'm gonna go hunting, whatever it is, you know, I'm just going to go live my life. That's great. Be disgusted and go live your life. That is really good advice. Now, if they're disgusted and they're angry and they want to take revenge, well, then it's open season on the R's, right? It, it, they're going to be more mad at the people that betrayed their trust than they are the D's. So the R's really have some trouble. And I've talked about this a lot, how I can see uh, 45 going to the DOJ and saying, you got to give me witness protection program because my, I've got threats, credible threats. I've talked about this a lot, right? Uh, they created Frankenstein. Frankenstein doesn't particularly have a heart. So it's not going to uh, be feel some kind of gushy way toward the Republicans, right? So this could be end up, this could end up really poorly for the Republicans. They've created this group of hardened uh, kind of hate-filled uh, people and allowed them and cheered them on when they are hate-filled, when they do spout har horrible stuff. You know, like Hillary said, they're deplorable, except for now they're a thousand percent more deplorable. And now the Republican Party and the pastors of their congregations are no longer able to control them. So that's when we go into the part of the timeline where I saw Kamala Harris being president. And I'm telling you, it's the law and order president. So if you have a bunch of yahoos out there trying to mix it up and you know, even attacking Republicans or whatever it is, you're going to get arrested and you're going to go to jail just like those thousand Jan 6 people, right? So this is maybe where the timeline makes sense, right? Where she just, you know, she, her administration and her DOJ, there's no room for any kind of shenanigans. I mean, no room. It's, it's a, it's a very, it's a, there's no, there's no gray. 
we think you broke the law. We're going to put you in jail and you can, we'll let a judge decide if you did. I mean, there's no, there's no gray here. So that's kind of what I see happening there. Be happy. It's crazy. I didn't know that about the anti-Jesus contingency in the churches. It's uh, never a dull moment here. All right, let's do one more or maybe two. We'll see. Uh, at little guy nor uh, says, I love Pete B- Buddha judge. And he keeps coming to mind for a role in or after the upcoming election, maybe a new cabinet appointment. I would love to see him in a high ranking position to work for world peace. Thank you for, for all you do. Yes, I agree with you. I, I do believe that Pete Buddha judge is uh, destined for higher office. I personally see him in a secretary of state position. That could be what you're thinking about in regards to world peace. Um, Secretary of State, uh, the the elder states person that goes out into the world and and talks about the mission of the United States and hopefully uh, creates more uh, better uh, conditions or bonds with uh, fellow countries. Um, so yes, I he speaks so many languages. He's so smart. He's so he's just uh, he's the whole package, right? So far, he's truly the whole package. So I do see him. Maybe he's quite young um, for Secretary of State, but I mean anything is possible, you guys. This is a, a whole new different ball game we've got going on here. But yes, I do see him coming out of um secretary of transportation um he could even possibly be vp um and he could end up being president one day for sure he, he we need to figure out some things before we have a gay male president but i think this could happen and say and he's young enough he's got the years i mean this guy can wait 15 years right so he's he, yeah, he's great. I, I do like Pete. I do think he can be, he, and for me personally, uh, sometimes he's a little wonky, uh, but you know, Hey, um, he needs seasoning. The guides are like, he needs seasoning, right? You, you, uh, he's young and he'll go out and have a lot of experiences and he'll get more seasoned and he'll be a great leader. That's what they just said. All righty. I think this is going to be the last question. There's so many good questions here. I think it's going to be the last question. And this is uh, Midas Touch reported, excuse me, this is from Marilyn Miner. And she says, Midas Touch reported Federalist Society recently published a scholarly legal paper concluding the 14th Amendment regarding insurrection applies to 45, whether he is charged and convicted of it or not. Federalist Society. Thoughts. So the Federalist Society is a, a group of, of jurists, of judges, I guess what they're saying, um, and they're quite conservative. And they um, and and they're really the reason we're in the mess we're in. Let's just be honest. Um, d- d- I'm just going to read the energy really quickly. The, they they want him gone. They need him gone. He's not their guy. He's gone rogue. He doesn't, uh, oh, that makes all the sense in the world. I never thought about it. Okay, right. He He's not their guy. He's never been their guy. Uh, he's someone else's guy. And that someone else is a country that starts with R. So they, they've never been a fan, apparently. Um, they've cautiously supported him because he's better than a Democrat. But he's too wily. He may changes his mind. He's very temperamental, mercurial. So they don't really, they would rather not have him. They would actually rather have Biden than have him. Um, he's very, right. Well, the longer he stays around, the more the energy has to rise up to deal with him, right? So think about it like that. If If this guy's around another year, then the energy will build up so much more in a year. If they get rid of him in two months, the energy is, isn't as big. Now, to have energy that's really big, that means it's harder for them to deal with it because this energy is justice. They don't want all that justice. They want this problem to go away so that everybody will go back to their sleepy little you know, lives and stop thinking or investigating what's happening with the Federalist Society or dark money or Crow or, you know, SCOTUS, you know, Supreme Court judges. This is all too much investigation for them. 
They need to make all this go away. We've talked about this before, this in, 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 in a different way, in the sense that, you know, sure, Trump is causing them a lot of investigative angst. He's calling, causing, calling attention to them. But we've talked about this before, how Clarence Thomas is doing the same thing. Clarence Thomas was also a problem. They were like, you got to go, man. You got to step down. If you would just step down, these investigations would stop. And then we could operate the way we need to operate. But because you won't step down, there's all these investigations linking you to us. So step down. He wouldn't do it. And now the Federalist Society has Trump adding more fire, more investigative energy to this whole thing of dark money. Whether Trump is directly related doesn't matter. The investigators are now investigating everything. And and they're looking under the rocks. They're picking up the furniture. They've never done this before, right? They're liable to find something that's really going to cause a problem. So that's where you find that the Federalist Society is like, even if he's not, even if he's not con- convicted, he cannot serve because we think that he broke the 14th Amendment. This is a shot across the bow. This is the Federalist Society saying this man cannot serve as president. We're not supporting this man. We don't think the Constitution supports this man. Again, this is crazy town, y'all. This is really you know, they, they say it's a curse when people say, may you live in interesting times. Well, I think somebody cursed all of us, right? Uh, because this interesting stuff is getting to be too interesting. I'm ready uh, for things to sort of uh, just calm down or, you know, Lady Justice to just arrest them all. So I can go on my life, right? Because uh, <laughs> this is uh, a lot. Listen, thanks so much for watching to the end of this video. Genuinely appreciate you. Thank you so much. I um, I want you to take really good care of yourself, okay? We're going through some things over here in the United States. Uh, so take really good care of yourselves and much love, much, much love to Hawaii and to those people. Uh, if you If they've lost people and they've lost their community, I just want you guys to know that I'm sending you love and light. I keep you in my prayers um, and take really good care of yourselves. Okay. We'll talk soon. For entertainment purposes only.